All right, Alexander, we had an announcement from the OPEC uh, Plus meeting, which uh, took place, I believe, in Austria. And uh, that is that Saudi Arabia has announced that they will be cutting production a million barrels per day. And the purpose of this uh, production cut is obviously to, to raise up the, the price. So this is big news coming out of uh, OPEC, OPEC Plus. On a side note, um, the media, a lot of the Western mainstream media was not allowed into this OPEC Plus meeting, I believe. Wall Street Journal, um, who else? Uh, maybe CNN, New York Times. I don't know, there was like three or four media publications. Bloomberg, Bloomberg, Wall Street Journal, and like one or two others that the Saudis actually said, we don't want them at this OPEC plus meeting. I just think that's that's an interesting development. Anyway, your thoughts on the outcomes of this meeting? It's a very interesting meeting. Now, bear in mind, the, the OPEC plus announced a previous production cut of a million barrels a short time ago. Now, this came uh, shortly after the Russians had on, um, announced a voluntary production cut of, I think it was 600,000 barrels a day. Now, what has actually happened is two things. Firstly, um, there was a lot of expectations earlier this year that all of these various actions that Western governments were taking, the oil price cap on the Russian oil and all that, was going to reduce um, the amount of oil that Russia was exporting. In the event, it did the opposite. It meant that the Russians were motivated to sell oil to India and China. India and China took all the oil they could. Uh, they were getting discounts. But even allowing for the discounts, the oil was trading for well above the EU price, the, the G7 price caps. And the result was that instead of cutting oil production, the Russians actually found themselves um, increasing oil production <laughs> because there is such a big demand for Russian oil at a slightly lower price than the um, Saudis and others had expected that, and certainly you know, above the price cap, though, that, um, you know, the Russians weren't finding any problems getting buyers for their oil. And in fact, uh, Rosneft, that's the big Russian state-owned oil company, has recorded, I, I believe, if not record profits, very high profits. <laughs> and um, the um, actual amount of oil, Russian oil, which is being shipped I think in April, at least, hit record levels. So, I mean, you know, so that didn't actually work. The, the original production cut that the Saudis announced a couple of short time ago didn't work because the Russians found as I said, that they had more customers for that oil than they could find. And what happened was there was a bit of a spat between the Saudis and the Russians. The Saudis were complaining that Russian, Russia was producing more oil than it should. And the two got together. And the result is this, produ this production cut. So I think that was one thing that put down pressure on oil prices over the course of the last few weeks. The other thing, and I think this is now becoming increasingly clear, is that certainly Europe and probably the United States are heading into a recession. And um, this is something that has been much debated about for a very, very long time. But the Germany is already in recession. Britain is definitely going into recession. The inflation figures um, a couple of weeks ago were bad, um, much worse than had been imagined. Interest rates, therefore, have risen further. And it's universally expected that Britain will be in recession by the next quarter. The United States is a little further behind the curve, but I think most people think the US is going into recession as well. So these two things taken together, the fact that just as I said, there was more Russian oil being shipped around the world than anybody had expected, including the Russians, and the fact that the Western economies are going into recession, put a downward pressure on the oil price. So this is intended, this latest production cut is intended to change that, to correct that, to mop up, if you like, the extra oil that is out there in the markets and increase the oil price. And part of the reason for doing that, by the way, is that Saudi Arabia 
is seeing its financial reserves decline. So it is keen to start getting the oil price up again. Yeah, um, what, uh, what's interesting about the United States is that uh, they may be a bit behind with, uh, with the recession, um, but it might actually hit, I was reading a Bloomberg article, their recession might hit just at the time of the elections. Yes. And that's going to really hurt Biden. Yes. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. You see, what he's been doing, what the administration has been doing is they've been kicking the can down the road. <laughs> and, and, and I mean, they did, they've did. they done one thing. I mean, they were, they were taking oil for a long time. I think they've now stopped doing it. But I think for a very long time, they were taking oil out of the U.S.'s strategic reserve to try to keep oil, price, oil prices down. And that might have had a marginal effect. But the other thing was they used the... Um, debt ceiling issue to actually increase spending via the Federal Reserve Board. <laughs> so the Federal Res the, the Fed and the Treasury were actually uh, um, coming, uh, selling um, assets in order to raise prices. So you had a kind of soft, it was not exactly a QE, but a kind of soft QE going on in the background over the last few months. So the result has been that the economy in the US has been doing rather, you know, in nominal numbers, rather better than it perhaps ought to have done. Now, what you're starting to see is that that's now run, that process has apparently run its course. And on top of that, we've had multiple revisions to the figures. I always say this with the US, never take the published figure the first published figure for granted, there's always revisions. And with an economy as big and as complex as that of the US, that is unsurprising. But the revisions have consistently now shown that over the last few months, the US economy has been weaker than the Biden administration would have us all think. But as I said, they kept it going for the last couple of months. And now, of course, that could come back to haunt them. We could see a more severe recession hit at exactly the wrong moment in the political cycle. Yeah, so you're going to have a recession in Europe, a recession in the United States, recession in the UK, but continued spending in Ukraine. How, how yeah. is that going to play out? Well, it, it continues. I can, it is, you're right to put your finger on spending because, of course, play, spending on Ukraine has been a problem. But, I mean, you know, it's been one thing. But the other thing that they've been doing, of course, and this is, I think, where people need to understand this, is that all European governments, and to some extent the US government too, but through its uh, so-called, you know, uh, uh, Green Act, you know, the one that the Climate Change Act. But what they, what they did was, confronted by higher energy prices last year, they subsidized industries. They, they they actually provided subsidies. Now, I thought that might actually lead to oil shortages, fuel shortages. But because of the warm weather, it didn't do that. But what it actually has done instead is that it has created more liquidity in the financial system and more debt as well. And that's putting upward pressure on interest rates. So the, 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 they kick the can down the road in that sense with the winter energy crisis as well. So all of that is now being pushed back and it's starting to look as if all of these problems are going to really strike heavily around, you know, late autumn perhaps, at which point, I'm going to say it very straightforwardly, nobody in the West is going to care any longer about Ukraine. I say nobody. The neocons will, their friends will, but nobody else will, because if there's a recession, it will dominate the news. The media uh, will focus on that. The public will certainly focus on that. And the political parties who got, especially the Democrats, with a difficult election coming, will not want to uh, focus to be all the time on Ukraine. So you're going to start to see pressure to ease off on uh, Ukraine as well, uh, on, on support for Ukraine as well. Yeah, and if they, uh, if they don't have a mild winter, say the winter's rough, 
Oh, well then. It's coming up. It's, it's going to cause all kinds of problems. Well, indeed. Yeah. Well, if that happens, then, then I mean, we're in a very different situation, even an even worse situation, because at that point, especially with all these pr production cuts from the Saudis, we could actually find ourselves in an energy shortage situation, in which case prices will surge, energy prices will surge, and inflation will rise further, and it, interest rates presumably will have to rise to keep up, and governments that have already spent money trying to bail out their industries who were facing these higher energy costs and households that have been facing all their high energy costs are going to have to ask themselves, do they spend more, get deeper into debt, <laughs> um, see interest rates perhaps go higher still, or do they face the fact that recession is now unavoidable? Well, I think that's a rhetorical question because we know what they're actually going to do. They're going to do the first, but the problems are going to get the, the problems are going to get worse altogether. And you have the U.S. election, as we said. We actually have yeah. a bunch of elections. The U.S. election, I think Poland is, is undergoing yeah, an election. Poland, election. There's going to be yeah. a bunch Spain, of elections. Yeah. Spain is also having Spain, an election soon. Yeah. Britain has an, most probably will have an election next year, too. So lots of things going on. Yeah. Okay. We will leave it there. The Duran.locals.com. We are on Rumble, Odyssey, Pitchute, Telegram, and Rockfin. And go to the Duran shop. 10% off. Use the code. Good day. Take care.